see all the heads in the water? Oh, yeah. If you flash on the water, you'll see heads coming and going. There's about 40 snakes in that water. 40? Yeah, it's wow. just, there's a big water snake. That's what people call a cottonmouth. What kind of snakes do we have in this, this pit? This has everything. Everything? It's got rat snakes, a lot of rattlesnakes, coach whips, the Nerodia water snake, there's copperheads, there's a couple of bull snakes in here. Now, what is the typical striking distance for one of these snakes? Most snakes can strike about half their body length on a good day, but they usually only strike a few inches because they're vulnerable when they stretch out. Mm -hmm. So they take short, quick jabs, get ready for a second strike. Okay, be ready. I'm gonna throw the mouse right out there by those eggs. Okay. And uh, one of these coach whips this in here will probably spot him immediately and they'll be on him instantly. They'll come darting out of there and, and uh, that one, yeah, he's already got him spotted. Here we go. These don't, they're not constrictors. They just grab him and shove him into the ground to kill him. They're just pushing real hard with big teeth. Mm -hmm. Now, probably another snake will come out and, and get in a fight with him. It's a pretty long one there. Okay, that one. He, he wants both of them. See, he's greedy. He's going to try to get both of them. Get two at once, huh? Yeah, they'll do it. He's trying to swallow this one real fast so he can get a grip on the other one. That one there is fixing to get nailed. So how many snakes do you have in this one area? There's probably 65, 70 snakes in here, but most of them are water snakes, and that, that pit's absolutely full of them. And how many mice would you spend to, to feed these guys on, I'd a, put, on an uh, average day? I'd put... Uh, maybe 30 in here. Right. They, they won't eat every day. Now the coach whips are pigs. You see he's already, mm -hmm. he's going to keep that one right in his view. That rattlesnake's probably going to bite him on the nose wanting that mouse. See how quickly he's woofing that one down, but he's oh, yeah. keeping his eye on that guy. Now he's going to have some competition. Okay, he's ready now. Got him by the head. Right he's going to take him right on down. Right behind the first You can't even see where the mouse is mm -hmm. in his belly already. He's mm -hmm. got it constricted. Right. Now this rattlesnake's coming after this one. The rattlesnakes are very slow hunters because they know they're venomous, so they mm -hmm. he'll strike him and they just leave him alone. I so, notice I notice the rattlesnakes have a wider head than some of the others. Is that, they've got that venom gland in there and, and a heavier it? jaw structure for, for striking and biting. The rattlesnake's just too slow to keep up with him. He, he bit him, but the other snake's going to get him. Mm. He seems to he seems to have all the motivation right now. I see the, <laughs> I see the side wall of a, of a cotton mouth in the pit there, that dark snake mm -hmm. sticking up. Oh, okay. There's several cotton mouths in here, but they, they rarely show themselves. Now, if you come around here, you'll see, uh, you'll get a view of a whole lot of snakes at one time. Birds of a feather flock together. The, the coach whips stay together, the rattlers stay together, and the, the coppers stay together. Mm -hmm. This is their natural habitat. Mm -hmm. now, I've so always the, been told that, you know, going out and, and climbing around on the rocks, you know, out in the, out in the wild, you should be careful about where you put your hands at your feet. Is that Never good sit advice? or put your hands somewhere or step over something until you look because these snakes are going to be close to the shelter. They're underneath the log that you want to sit on. They're mm -hmm. underneath the big rock ledge you're climbing on or going to sit on, or they're under the shade of the rock overhang just like you're there and um, this is their natural habitat see he's just kind of dormant there he's not too interested he thinks he's hidden right now he thinks he's completely camouflaged mm -hmm. now he knows now he's been he knows spotted he's not. so he'll strike see how quickly he came out of there and starts rattling but backing away is the motive not not aggressiveness he's he's trying to hide immediately that's the position they That's take. That's a pretty intimidating sound. Yes, it is. And uh, his job right now is to stay away from me, not come at me. He struck out of defense because I had basically stepped on him mm -hmm. and immediately took off the other direction as quick as he could go. And uh, a lot of people are surprised to see rattlesnakes up in the trees. By, mm -hmm. by late afternoon, this whole tree would be full of rattlesnakes. People aren't aware that they climb real well. And, uh, you know, they're up in the walls of old barns and buildings. They're up on top of big cactus plants and on the low limbs of trees, especially in floodwaters like we're seeing a lot in Tennessee and Alabama, mm -hmm. Florida. The snakes are up in the, inside the, the houses. They're up in cabinets. They're up in your, your flower bed shrubbery. Mm -hmm. And um, rattlesnakes climb as well as any other snake does. I guess it is a, kind of a common thing just to stare at your feet when you're 
when you're looking for snakes, yeah. but you don't think to look above you sometimes. They certainly get out in the in the uh, upper upper decks of things. There's quite a few in there. They're um, mostly coach whips in there. Mm -hmm. Now, are snakes mostly solitary, or do they actually live? They have, they have some sort of social structure and all. Well, that's interesting. Um, very few people ask that. Some snakes tend to breed for life. Copperheads tend to pair off. So do moccasins. They tend to be territorial, mm -hmm. moccasins especially. And any territorial animal tends to establish a mating cycle with, with one or two females. But rattlesnakes simply den in the same area every year, but they don't, um, they don't run in packs or, or groups, and they typically are solitary. Uh, they go to the dens in September or October. Uh, they stay in there through the, the cold spells, and generally by late February, early March, they're starting to leave around here. They breed at that time. The gravid females return to the den area or near it earlier than the males and they usually they have live babies. The rattlesnakes have live babies, no eggs, whereas the coach whips lay eggs. Mm -hmm. And um, the little babies are totally on their own. The parent doesn't feed them, doesn't protect them, doesn't teach them. So their instincts allow them to survive and they need to be near that den because as inclement weather comes on, they've got to have the same protection from the weather that, that the big snakes have. And typically that's why they all end up aggregated in one den area. Right. But you notice how slow the rattlesnakes are. They move at two speeds, slow and stop. Uh, everybody can outwalk a rattlesnake, especially when he's trying to go the other way. But for some reason, we think of snakes as being slimy and slithery and also very fast. And they're neither one. They're very dry and scaly like a piece of sandpaper. And they're very, very slow. 99% of the time, they'll use their camouflage first. They don't, they don't crawl away. They don't let you know they're there. They rarely rattle. Just like when I got in here, he wasn't rattling until I mm -hmm. touched him. Right. Once you've broken the barrier that they know they've been identified, then they put on a posture. They rattle, they, they suck in air, and they swell up and try to get look big and mean. But basically, that camouflage is how they rely on in nature to survive, and that's what they apply when we come near them too or any other predator. Mm -hmm. But given a chance to escape, they will. It's the people that throw rocks at them or try to hit them with a stick or catch them that prevent them from escaping that get bitten most of the time. And, and a lot of times... The snakes are a lot of them in one place, not because they're buddies, but because they're brought to the same food, water, or shelter mm -hmm. that brought the first snake there. And so you're busy hitting one snake with a stick and you step on one like this one that was laying there very quietly. You're focused on one and you don't realize there may be four or five there because there's food there. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people are bitten by the snake that uh, was, was near the other snake that they originally saw. Snakes reproduce now by laying eggs, is that right? Uh, most snakes lay eggs, most of the non-poisonous snakes. Around here, the exception are the, the uh, water snakes. It's very difficult to lay eggs in the water and had the baby survive. So the, the Nerodia, the non-poisonous water snakes you see so many of in here, they, they are live-bearing snakes, and most of the water snakes are. The rattlesnake, water moccasin, and copperhead all have live babies. Mm. And the average western diamondback rattlesnake like this will have between 8 and 12 babies. They look all the pit vipers babies look exactly like the adult for some reason people want the little snakes to be different and they somehow go through a metamorphosis and look like the big one later but when they're born the little rattlesnake looks just like a diamondback rattlesnake he has a very clear rattler on the tip of his tail mm -hmm. he has two fangs he has very toxic venom and a very nasty disposition from the time he's born same way with the cottonmouth and the copperhead they, they're identical to the adult in every way it up with another mouse, one of these two rat snakes. It takes them a minute to get the scent and realize that that's food and then they begin to hunt. This big one here may grab him. Who's this little guy with the yellow belly over here? That's uh, called a Texas racer. They're mean mm -hmm. as a hammer mm -hmm. and uh, they consistently bite you. Really? But they're not poisonous. There's a lot of snakes in that pool too. I noticed where they've thrown up a couple of mice in there, but they, they'll just see it. You'll see a nose, a nostril stick up periodically just to get a little air. Mm -hmm. I think that rat snake there is starting to show a little interest. He moved his head a little bit. They start jerking their head when they finally get the scent trail. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like a triangulation. They, they move their head and they move their body until they get the perspective of where the scent's coming from. But these snakes aren't nearly as aggressive as the coach whips. They're the real heavy feeders. But a strike from one of these is pretty awesome. And they, they almost have to find water or shelter during the heat of the day. So if you're out in the 
picnic area or hunting or fishing or walking or camping, your, your best time to be out is in the middle of the day. The snakes are going to be under something. They'll be under thick brush or under a, a root system. Here we go. He'll loop two or three loops around him, and then he'll start squeezing him. That was one I wouldn't have predicted. He came from way over here out of nowhere. <laughs> just decided it was meal time. I see that mouse is actually getting um, suffocated right now okay. with, the, with the loops. Those are very powerful snakes in comparison to the size of the mouse. Mm -hmm. 